Thanks to have you all here. Today we will talk about the roadmap for a smooth transition. For those of you who follow the news, we noticed that a lot of IT managers are rethinking their uh, IT infrastructure and their usage of Citrix. We also get a lot of questions about it. You also see it in the news that some large IT distributors uh, stopped offering Citrix. Um, so I think it's a really hot topic. We also noticed that we got a lot of signups from uh, all countries. <laughs> um, and today, Eric Nikolai, the CEO of Workspace 365, will share his uh, experience and his uh, stories from our customers who are also uh, busy with moving away from Citrix or just their transition to the cloud. So welcome, Eric and I will give you the word and the floor. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, yeah, so to, so to get started, so my name is Eric Nikolai, and uh, during each week, we have many conversations with customers, and it's all surrounding the question, like, how do we take the next step from our IT infrastructure? And, and our goal is not to say, you don't need Citrix, or you need to move away from Citrix. We just wanted to describe the, and kind of give a full picture of what we get as a feedback from customers and what's trending uh, on their IT roadmap. And one of the kind of the key components in many conversations we have is that we have a full Citrix infrastructure today, meaning that every employee goes to the Citrix desktop. And how is this kind of evolving uh, moving forward? Is it still a solid basis or is there a new approach or different approach uh, to our IT infrastructure, to our landscape of applications? And how will this evolve moving forward? And this is the goal to share today to give you a clear roadmap on how we provide the smooth transitioning out of your kind of traditional desktop infrastructure uh, to a more modern approach. Uh, of course, feel free to, to absorb it as you like. Uh, it's just some, to give you some ideas how the approach can be done differently. Um, so first, before we uh, give you kind of the, the overview of, where we, of, of the whole conversation, we just wanna break it down in a few steps. Uh, so first, I give you a bit more detail about who, who am I, who am I uh, the company I founded in 2010. Um, and then kind of give you an, a recap of, okay, how did it all start with virtualization? So RDP, then SaaS of 65, and why we think breaking free is, is, is a good alternative or is something uh, is worthwhile considering. And again, that's not based upon uh, what we believe, it's based upon the conversation we have with our customers or new customers uh, and customers who are thinking about the next step. And then ultimately, how you, can you get started? Uh, and when I say good afternoon, I can also say good morning. Uh, I can also say good, good evening, good afternoon, uh, because we see many different countries, many different time zones joining. Um, so I'm here uh, close to Amsterdam. My time is two. Um, so I just had lunch and for the rest to just finish dinner or just had breakfast. Uh, any time zone is welcome today. Yeah, so a bit about me. Um, 37, um, father of three. And together with my business partner, Hans de Graaf, we founded the company in 2010. Um, so in the beginning, uh, the reason why we started Virtual 65 was for two things. One is we saw that SaaS was becoming more and more kind of in the application landscape. And second, we saw that many applications were very hard to kind of consume and understand for, for, for many uh, employees and organizations. So if you are a diehard ERP fan and you work in HR, you understand your HR application inside out. Uh, the challenge we saw is that especially people who just consume little bits of the application, always struggle to kind of understand the application itself. So the things we wanted to solve were, were kind of were two things. We wanted to solve the complexity challenge from moving away from, well, let's say, moving to browser-based application. And we just want to simplify the whole way of we consume, how we consume data and applications as a whole. Uh, and that's why we said as a mission, we want to conquer complexity for people who make the difference. And as we talk about people who make the difference, there are three vertical markets that are kind of key in our uh, approach and our expansion over the years, that is government, uh, healthcare, and education. Uh, and we believe that public uh, sectors, as those three verticals are, are, are kind of, are, are, are the ones that are the kind of serving, uh, served by people who make the difference. So that's why we, we set the goal to really help them in conquer their complexity challenge. Uh, so we are active in many countries via IT parties. We have one office based in the Netherlands, so I like to describe ourselves as an ISV, so an independent software vendor. And, and we, we, we can be so little as our partners are so large. Uh, and the strength of a partnership means that uh, we can fulfill very large organizations, small organizations via our partner channel that kind of use our workspace as an ingredient of their whole modern workspace proposition. Uh, means that we have customers in New Zealand and Canada we have never spoken to. 
uh, but it also means we get more and more kind of involved in customers today, uh, both in Netherlands, UK and the US, uh, where we want to play an active role in understanding the requirements. What is your next step and how can we help, how can we facilitate your next step in your, in your digital workspace transition? Yeah, so of course, like it's, it's hard to, to kind of uh, to get feedback from everyone who joined today. Uh, there's probably a reason why you joined. Uh, and of course, we would love to know why. Uh, but I think when we listen again to the conversation we had to with our customers, it's about how can we take the next step and, and how much do we need from Citrix? How much will it be left in two years? And I think the best person to answer this question is, is yourself either or, or your colleagues. Uh, I think it starts with considering is our desktop infrastructure today still valid uh, for a kind of scenario over two or three years? And the way this transitioning will happen might be different for the vertical care or government as we see that the application landscape is very different for those two different verticals. So I think you can easily determine your own pace of certification of the rise of the mobile workforce, of uh, kind of the information silos, the three trends we think is a kind of a key driver in Workspace 65 adoption. Uh, I think it's good to consider for yourself, why did I join today? What I'm trying to solve? And in the end, answer the question, did I actually get kind of some, 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 some first steps in my kind of new approach uh, towards the modern desktop? So when we, when we talk internally about what, what is actually the driver of, of this, this change in, in the IT landscape? And a few things I think will stand out. Um, so we see that the amount of applications running on the Windows infrastructure is decreasing. Uh, we see that uh, Microsoft 365 is getting more prominent uh, in, every IT, in, in any organization. And, it, and it's kind of rethinking, okay, what can we use and leverage from Microsoft 365, which we already pay for? And how can we kind of then reduce costs on the other IT infrastructure components? And uh, I think when I describe the three key verticals for us, uh, you see there is a an, an high percentage of employees uh, with low digital skills. Uh, and it's not about not willing, uh, but just not able or the high complexity of the, of the current situation. So we kind of identify the kind of the, the reduced cost of the infrastructure. Uh, we're getting more and more out of Microsoft 365 or Office 365 combined with a workforce that is, that is challenged uh, with the increased amount of applications and then kind of bring it all together. How, how is this kind of, how is this working in, in the next step scenario? And I think when you, when you go back, uh, back in time, um, the, the rise of Citrix was very prominent, uh, especially with IT infrastructures where bandwidth was an issue, where security was an issue. And then Citrix played a critical factor, I think, in helping many organizations to, to, to kind of get a decent amount of application virtualized in a way that we found it was secure and it was, let's say, workable from a bandwidth perspective. And what we see now is that many protocols from either Microsoft or other vendors is kind of uh, making it much simpler to either deal with the bandwidth issue or with the security, with the security issue. So the, the question we get from many customers is that, do we still need Citrix? And I think the, asking the question is very valid. And I think the answer is, how many applications will actually remain in your existing infrastructure and what is the best way to deal with those? And I think if you think about this, this balance, if the majority of your application landscape is defined as legacy or Windows based or Linux based, or is actually running on an IT infrastructure, either hosted by you or in Azure or in, in AWS, uh, and the minority is the web application side, I think it makes perfect sense to stay kind of in a virtual desktop, uh, remote desktop scenario. But in many organizations we see is that kind of the web apps is increasing and the amount of legacy applications are decreasing. So kind of the, the huge kind of focus becomes on the web application side and then the legacy application just becomes in the minority. And I think one thing we learned over, over the years is that if you have to manage a minority, it just becomes much more challenging to kind of do this well. Um, so what we provide is just a very easy way to kind of help your organization transition from the amount of legacy applications to web and to kind of facilitate this from a single workspace rather than having to go to three different repositories to access the application as an employee. So to give you kind of some background where we started and what happened since, I think it's it's valid to kind of think back. Uh, and as we started our company, there was no such thing as Office 65 at the time was still Beeples. Uh, and we actually thought, like, how can we actually work with, with, with Office and with, with Excel and Word and PowerPoint? How should we do this? And actually, to be very honest, uh, we did build our first version of Word and PDF and Excel. Uh, we used some open source component as we thought, hey, it needs to be included in the workspace. If you want to have a digital workspace in your browser, you need to be able to open up those Word documents and your Excel documents. And then when Office 65 was launched, we took a, we took a huge pivot and we said, we don't want to kind of rethink and, and, and kind of redo what's already been done by Microsoft. We just want to integrate what's already available. 
Uh, and that's how we launched Virtual Specialty 5 as a product. Uh, and, and we kind of really focused for, as a first step to kind of aggregate all the different type of applications. And around that corner, 2014, it was the first step we had with conversation with Gardner. I went to the Gardner Symposium in Barcelona around the time frame, And it was the first conversation I had with Gardner about, okay, what's actually this, this digital workspace as a, as a segment? How will this arise? And how will this play a role in kind of the, the, the go-to market for, for many organizations, either in the verticals, large enterprise and smaller enterprises? And the interesting thing is that we saw that as we were an, I don't say early starter or first mover, whatever label you want to give this, uh, around 2018, 2019, we saw VMware launching Workspace ONE, uh, Citrus launched Citrus Workspace. So many larger organizations launched their own workspace proposition. And, and that really helped us to drive a uh, conversation with customers because as the larger ones kind of join your market segment, it really helps to justify that there is actually a an, an, an requirement uh, to, to, to kind of rethink your desktop strategy. Uh, and until today, uh, we are really helped by th those approaches because we see that Citrix or VMware or Microsoft is really focusing on, the, on their own kind of segment where from a customer perspective, from your perspective, we see that the IT landscape is not just single Citrix or single Microsoft or single VMware, it's kind of a blend. Uh, and that's how we think being agnostic is really helping to kind of aggregate those different uh, repositories. And last year, or let's say two years ago, we saw all the many internets are kind of rethinking, are we an internet? Are we a digital workspace? And we try to be different and not because we want to, because we think that an, an internet itself is not your digital workspace and your digital workspace itself is not an internet. Um, so from a workspace 65 perspective, we decided to integrate existing internets in a way that you don't have to move away from the internet to kind of still facilitate a single digital workspace. But at the same time, we do have customers saying, yeah, we do have an internet, it's outdated, and we want to move forward with just Work 65 as a platform and also use it as an internet. Uh, and, and again, it's not up to us to decide which steps you need to take at what time. Uh, for us, it's just about helping you facilitate what you have today and how can you kind of get the next step either at your IT infrastructure and out of your kind of uh, internet or other different sources which we can leverage. And, and last year, while um, we do feel for organizations that have been shut down during the pandemic, uh, and we do feel for, for organizations still kind of su su surviving or suffering uh, from the current lockdown, especially in the Netherlands, where we see the same lockdown scenarios in the UK and other countries. Uh, but it really helped us to kind of get on the picture and get on the map in, in other verticals where we haven't been very active in. Um, and we saw customer conversations driving uh, to a much faster pace than it happened before because there was an urgency to kind of really facilitate the workforce working from anywhere rather than just the office. Um, so for us last year has been, um, has been amazing in regards to growth. Uh, and again, so that's for us, that feels like a blessing. Uh, so we still need to facilitate and, and kind of further expand, but just, we just want to keep listening to the conversation we have with our customers, what is happening after. So will people run to the new office? How will the new digital workspace facilitate people working from home and the office? So how can we kind of still become and play the critical, the critical role we want to play for organizations after the pandemic has ended, uh, which hopefully will be soon. Uh, and I think many conversations have with, we have with Gardner is about, uh, first it was about the rise of VDI. And kind of now we kind of have the conversation, okay, is VDI actually happening? Uh, will it end? And I think, again, so as you have an IT landscape of applications, there will still be an, an amount of applications that run in an IT infrastructure. And the question is then, how do we virtualize them? How do we make them available to our employees? Is that as a local installed application on Windows 10? Is it as a virtualized app uh, based on Windows Virtual Desktop? Is that continuing to use on Citrix uh, for specific reasons or just because we have it today and we paid for the license? I think the scenarios are very different per organization uh, and it will not go as fast as, as people predict. Uh, but I think it will happen that eventually VDI will become just an, a way to kind of host the application, leverage the application rather than just leverage the whole desktop because the desktop itself is not making a difference anymore. It's about facilitating the application and the information rather than just having a full-blown desktop uh, because it can be done very differently and far more cost efficient. Uh, and that's why we see our customers are, are thinking, how can we break free from our virtual desktop? Uh, and I think that's the second question I think it's good to answer. Like, why would we break free? What is the benefit? And uh, the benefit we see is flexibility from device choice. It's uh, cost reduction on the infrastructure side. Uh, and it's far more from a user perspective, thinking about usability and simplification rather than just presenting the application in a different scenario. 
because if you think about the Fed client management uh, five, six, seven, eight years ago, based on Roman profiles, then we simplified this whole management of this and we still offered the same animal, but just with a different skin. Uh, so what we try to do is to rethink the whole desktop strategy. And I think that's, that's the most obvious reason why to rethink and think like breaking free is not something we have to do, but something we want to do based upon the savings we do on the infrastructure side and the kind of the productivity gains we do on the employee side. And the way we think about the workspace actually contains four important elements. It's about the workspace should kind of uh, allow you to access any type of application, meaning local, virtual, and SaaS. And the application should be provided based upon specific conditions. So it should be uh, role-based. So if you have access to the application, you should see it. If you're not on the right device, you should not see it. If you don't have the right identity, you should not see it. If you're not on the right location, if you don't have the right browser or the right OS, so this whole kind of application scenario should be kind of highly personalized. And then uh, we want to be able to kind of communicate and collaborate within this workspace. And ultimately, the last step we take with our customers today uh, in their roadmap of the digital workspace is how can we actually use micro apps to really simplify the data access within the application rather than just opening up the application. Uh, and I think those four different elements is almost like a stepped approach. So it's first about enabling all the different application types defining kind of the, the conditions you can access them, integrate what you have today on the communication and, and the collaboration level, and then think, hey, what can actually be simplified to really kind of save the time for our, for our key uh, employees? And, and we see our uh, key, for, let's say a key amount of employees for us is the frontline worker. And I think one thing that kind of they have in common for us is they only spend, let's say 20, 30, 40% of the time behind a laptop, tablet, or mobile uh, for their work uh, items. Um, so that means that those people actually perform, let's say, either healthcare duties or retail or government, and they just, IT is just a facilitator. And for me personally, I can spend eight to 10 hours behind my laptop, but in the verticals we are active in, we see a different scenario. It's about the people who actually do their work and they need IT to facilitate their job, but just, it's only part of it. So the more simple it can be, the more accessible, um, the more complexity we can, the kind of the more complexity we can reduce for those is it, unbelievable. And I think that's kind of the way to look at the, the workforce, not as a whole, but divide them in, okay, who can we actually help most? And what is the benefit if we can, st can start with helping them? And what is the next step? And many times we think about, uh, let's say, the, the, let's say the, the, the AutoCAD user or the Photoshop user as the exception. And yes, we need to manage the exception, but let's focus on the vast majority of who needs to be helped and where is actually the cost savings the biggest if you think about the different approach to the desktop. And then if you kind of rethink the workspace concept, um, our goal is to really kind of aggregate all those different elements. So we want to integrate all the different applications. We want to kind of provide as, mu as much information as you, as you need to actually do your job. And then it becomes actually a kind of an, an aggregation of an agnostic approach of all the information and application that can, can come from different angles. Um, so imagine you have a Citrix infrastructure, you have a Windows virtual desktop infrastructure and some application coming from a remote desktop from a specific vendor, and then there is a need to kind of aggregate them all still from a single workspace. And, and in, in many cases we see, okay, internally we use Citrix, but this application vendor who calls it SaaS or cloud is actually using RDP to provide the application. So the way we set up our, our, our workspace 65 infrastructure is that we can actually facilitate all those different sources and provide still a single salon experience to all those applications from a single workspace. And then if you kind of take this as a concept uh, to a real life example, you see that if you kind of authenticate and log into your workspace, actually your workspace is a combination of the application side. And, and many customers we have today, they start with the application portal, they start with the simplification of Office 65. And the way we can bridge the gap as we aggregate the file server, SharePoint, OneDrive, into a single docker management app is really taking the first step out of your existing desktop to a more modern approach. And, and if you kind of see this example, this is actually an example of a workspace uh, we, we use in, in, in for, for one of our healthcare customers. And they actually use the workspace to aggregate all those different uh, elements as a micro app to kind of already give a preview of the kind of data within the application. So for 70% of the information, you don't need to log into a specific application, you already get a preview. 
uh, it's about your recent documents, your calendar, your email, but then again, specific ERP, HR systems that we can aggregate and kind of provide a preview of what's relevant for you today or tomorrow or next week. Uh, to kind of allowing you to get a, a kind of single uh, entry to the, to the information that's relevant for you. And the next step for us is we need to get approval systems in the workspace as well. Uh, if you think about an expense approval, uh, we have we heard stories from customers that the manager needs to log into five different systems several times a day just to find if he still has approvals or denials for specific processes. And if you can kind of aggregate this on the right in the activity feed, you don't need to actively look for approvals. You just get them in your activity feed within the workspace and they're actually aggregated from different sources. And, and this is kind of where we see fast forward our customers moving uh, with us with Workspace 65. Uh, but this is not where, where it starts uh, again. So it ma mainly starts with an application portal, replacing the existing desktop, becoming device independent uh, and allowing employees to really kind of aggregate and, and access all the applications from any device, from any location, still relying on the conditions you set in the beginning. And to kind of give you an idea of customers uh, we, we went through this transition together with uh, is an, a very good example. A customer who started with us uh, three years ago uh, October in Netherlands, a healthcare organization, and they said, we need to move away from Citrix. We have more and more SaaS-based applications, and we don't want to access them within the Citrix desktop. We just need to rethink the whole the kind of whole concept. And the beauty of their approach was that they actually were able, together with Work 65, to really create a single entrance for their application. So the only way the employees within October can access the application is via the workspace. So there's no other way around. So you first go to your workspace, then you can access all your applications, and that means uh, web or, or legacy. Uh, and then if you go, uh, if you start on the first day, this is the workspace you get. If you leave October, the workspace is shut down and access to all the applications shut down. So it's actually a fully automated process where they facilitate people within different groups with different roles, and the workspace is a consequence of all the automation we have done together. Um, so while you present it, it's almost like a dashboard in a car. So the engine is running. The engine has so many different components that need to be in place. And then if you see the engine starts, you're just in your dashboard and you can kind of access and view all the different warnings. And that's the way we kind of worked with October on the whole transitioning from the traditional desktop to a full browser-based desktop experience. And <coughs> sorry. Um, so there was for them a huge need as well to kind of at the same time uh, try to migrate as many applications to SaaS. Uh, and that is a trend we see many times within uh, healthcare. Uh, and I should say care, not so much cure. So cure re re representing hospitals and that's not, not, not very that's easily done to re replace all the Windows infrastructure. Uh, but in care, we see a huge trend to kind of go for SaaSification as fast as they can. Um, and if I look at government, for example, then the trend is the same, but for, uh, on a different pace. Uh, so for our customers in, in government, uh, we see that we still have to you know, let's say include as let's say very uh, large amount of Windows-based applications, either running on Citrix or, or, or RDP, and then allowing them to kind of migrate over the years. So the pace is different, but the trend is the same. Uh, so the amount of application in Windows is decreasing. How can we facilitate and enable a single workspace to kind of facilitate this transitioning? And the thing I really like about Carinova, uh, a healthcare customer as well in the Netherlands, is they had a huge challenge in kind of justifying the, the investment uh, for their, uh, from the top of my head, 3,300 users uh, or employees uh, to all get them to E3 from C5 while they previously just purchased an X amount of license from Microsoft on, on the office side. Uh, so they had to they want to migrate to Office 65, but to kind of justify E3 for everyone was just just too much as a gap within the budget. Uh, so the way we integrate with the file server is that we're actually able to use the online editors for Microsoft, so Excel online, Word online, and PowerPoint online, and still are and they're still able to open up files from the file server using Word online, Excel online. And that specific example allowed them to use F3 rather than E3. Uh, and I think the cost savings. Uh, to kind of as a component of the of the of the desktop uh, was just was just enormous, and I think you can make the calculation yourself: 3150 minus 840 multiplied by 3300. You can do the math. Uh, it's it's huge, and it's a monthly cost, right? So it's just not the one time; it's a monthly cost you can save upon, uh, and combined with the Citrus infrastructure, right? So they they still they, they were running a Citrus infrastructure in their own data center, and they're now moving away from Citrix to Windows Virtual Desktops for the exceptions of the application landscape. 
Uh, and overall, that's just an, a project of, of, of many different people working internally to kind of align also different streams to kind of Citrix and Office 65 implementation together with the workspace. And the way we just aggregate it allows them to start with the workspace 65 uh, workspace. And then in the back end, they can migrate step by step all the different types of applications. And, and of course, it's, it's very hard to kind of give an, a general scenario. We get the question very often, how can we kind of give a scenario of cost savings uh, per year or per organization? And we just had to kind of give an, an average of, of an organization, let's say four or 500 employees. And, and the savings can be different uh, if you're with 1500 or with 100. Uh, I think if you kind of take the overall uh, takeaway of this calculation is that uh, as we only use and leverage the, uh, the kind of the hosting infrastructure, either in Azure or your own data center, if you launch the application with Citrix, and for the rest, everything happens in the browser, you will see that the kind of the, the consumption of your data center become much less if you only use it for the application rather than the whole desktop. That's a use cost saving. And then the whole office approach, as I mentioned with Carinova or um, or the offer, the other, let's say, uh, Office 65 examples, is actually you can you can work with different office licenses uh, and still give the full uh, workspace experience to, to the employees. Uh, so we see cost savings up to 35%, sometimes even 50. Uh, but I don't think it's fair to take the 50 from the exception as the standard. Uh, and of course, for some, uh, 35 will be 20. Uh, and mainly due to the fact that it's more about making rigid choices. So we had a customer with 1,700 employees. They had a full-blown Citrix desktop, and they decided to, to, to add version 5 in front of it just to simplify work for employees uh, and not to reduce the Citrix side of it. And that's more a decision of the organization rather than ours. So I think it's more about making uh, bold decisions. Uh, sometimes, okay, we don't have the budget for E3, so we need to go for F3 or we want to go for F3. And that's just making the right decisions with the right people within the organization. So okay, what do we actually need for those different employees? Yeah, so as, as, a, as a future, so I think if, I, if we give a foresight of where we're heading, um, we just don't want to provide an application portal. And as I mentioned in the example, for us, it becomes more and more about the information, the application rather than the, than, than the application itself. And well, we see it as a very important first step to create this application portal is not about where we want to go with our customers. And that's how we kind of see that uh, we try to divide customers on their kind of level of majority or the, or the level of majority in their whole uh, adoption of the workspace. And it, again, it mainly starts with the access to the application. Then we work together with our partners and customers. How can we kind of simplify the information flow? And then ultimately kind of say, what kind of process can we simplify? So what type of kind of process within the organization actually consume a lot of time for specific people? And how can this be done differently? And then just only asking the question and thinking and looking on the shoulder of an employee saying, hey, this is actually the work you do. How can we simplify this? And, and we see this now with, for example, an, an, a customer in, in education. Uh, they had an, a flow for, 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 for the teachers. They need to go to three different steps just to access one information flow. And we were able with a micro app to reduce this to one. So every day this process was getting coming back to, to their teachers like four or five times a day. So just looking on the shoulder and thinking about, hey, how can this be done differently? Now can we actually simplify this whole process based upon your role, based upon your role in the organization, and then use this to kind of this, this, this thinking with this one organization and communicate with other customers, hey, this is what we've done for this customer. Is it beneficial for you? And the way we develop our platform is that we don't do one-offs. We don't build one integration or one micro app for one customer. If we launch it in a micro app for this specific process, it's instantly available to our customers. Uh, and that's the beauty of working with key verticals. We can now do innovation for healthcare and kind of leverage uh, the different sources from different customers. Say, this is what we've done with this customer. Uh, it's now available. You can use this. And uh, we have seen examples of micro apps we, we created on the Friday or launched on the Friday. And the end of the Friday afternoon, it was already being activated by 35 of our customers just instantly. Um, so in many examples, you all need to do kind of the, the intelligence yourself, or you need to hire it or bring it in from, from an external company to kind of help you rethink your kind of your simplification uh, within the workspace. And we try to kind of use our movement with our customers to really do it with and for you. Uh, and hopefully for you becomes more prominent rather than with you, because that means other people are doing the same thing as you are. And they kind of use the kind of the common knowledge uh, to kind of implement new scenario simplification. 
Yeah, then uh, so asking the, the first question, like, why did you join uh, and which step will you take? And we just try to kind of take the stepped approach. Um, so it starts uh, in, from our perspective, to bring all the application to the one portal. Um, from, a from a technical perspective, with University 5, we are able to kind of integrate both with the local receiver from Citrix and the online receiver. Uh, that's a choice you can make. So you can either give a preview to, to, to the employee and say you want to start locally or online, or you can make the choice for them. Um, and then the conditions determine, are you allowed to exit the application? And the customers we had using Citrix uh, last year, January, uh, with the network issues they had uh, and the security issues, is that you were able to both set a uh, kind of a condition, a maintenance window on the application saying, hey, this application is not available, or create a message saying, hey, this application is not available from your location. You need to come to the office to access it. And this was not our decision uh, to say, we will disable the application from outside the organization. Uh, there was a network issue, a security issue with Citrix, but the way we set the workspace, they were actually able to communicate with the workforce, say, this is what you need to do. Uh, rather than just start sending emails to people what they need to do. So the workspace was communicating with the workforce, but what they need to change in order to still continue to, to get the job done. And the example I mentioned as, as we integrate with the Workspace 5, uh, sorry, as we integrate OneDrive, SharePoint, and the file server in Workspace 5, you now see a preview of the docker management app we have in Workspace 5 that actually kind of aggregates those different sources. And the reason why we do this is that we see many organizations they kind of struggle with how can we get away from the file server to SharePoint and OneDrive. Uh, and the way we think about this is don't go for the rigid approach saying, hey, you need to do the, the file server migration first, and then you can start using version 55, or then you can start using SharePoint and OneDrive. We just take the stepped approach uh, where you actually allow your employees to kind of either migrate their own content uh, or kind of help them to get started disable safe on the file server and only enable them to open up uh, files from the file server and then save them in SharePoint by, by themselves. So you can actually take uh, this, this whole aggregation view uh, to kind of provide access to the OneDrive for business, SharePoint team sites and the file server and still able to kind of access all those different uh, sources from a single workspace. Um, and we try to create roadmaps with our customers. Okay, where, where are you today? Um, so what are, you, what are your steps? Uh, and where do you want to go? Uh, and this is actually a process we've done over and over again with our partners and customers. We've written it out for you um, so we can, we can share uh, the whole roadmap. Uh, you can fill in for yourself. And of course, we're willing to help you fill it in for you. Uh, it's actually becoming kind of a foot and kind of an, 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 let's say a map or a, let's say a first step. But how can you actually take this approach? What is the application landscape? Where can we save the cost? What do we need to do next? And what is kind of the, the, the final step before we can go live? And I think if you, if you realize that the application landscape will reduce, then sometimes again, this will be the right time to implement a Workspace 55 solution or an alternative. And it's okay, at that stage, we can migrate this. At that stage, we can save cost license this. At that stage, we can enable Office 55. And then it becomes a very logical stepped approach. Rather, what we see today with customers we, we speak to is that it almost feels like a whole migration they need to do over a weekend, and then on Monday, everything is different. And yes, if you start using University 5, there becomes a point where things will become different for the employee, but just the one time change, and the rest can be done in the background. And this kind of constant uh, change in the IT infrastructure, I think, is evident. Like we don't know what we will do tomorrow from an application landscape, and maybe tomorrow, but not, maybe not next year. Um, so I think our goal is to kind of help you to support what you have today from decisions you made in the past towards decisions you have to make in the future we're not known yet. And, and two years ago, we could have said, we don't know that Windows Virtual Desktop is coming around the corner, uh, but now we aggregate and then integrate it. So this will happen more and more where we see different ways of accessing application. And our goal is just to be agnostic by aggregating it all. Um, so yeah, so so this was kind of an, an, a stepped approach, uh, starting with uh, how VDI SaaS uh, was getting more prominent, the way we view kind of the modern workspace, and then how can we kind of get the next step with a stepped approach uh, and create this kind of outline of where you are today and where you want to be. Uh, we can help you drive this conversation either uh, with you or one of your colleagues, and they kind of create this as a as a presentation to to the rest of the company who are involved to kind of really start building the business case about cost saving, time saving, and how to get started. Uh, I'm open to schedule this, uh, or I, I'm open for, for those meetings. So you can either uh, schedule it with me or reach out to, to, to the rest of our team. 
Uh, and I think having a one-on-one -on -one conversation really help kind of answer the questions you may have today. Uh, we just want to give you the, the first outline uh, in the past, what is it? 35 minutes. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Eric. I also see uh, some questions in the Q&A and also in the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, and I think the first question is, um, what was the overall migration strategy of Carinova in October when they were moving away from Citrix? So was it a big bang or did they transform from the published desktop to published applications within Workspace? Do you want me to answer it, Mark? Yes, please. Sure. Um, yes, I think the, the project started for both as a transitioning, uh, so uh, transform. And I think ultimately it, it, it became a bit more rigid, a bit more big bang, uh, as they were able to kind of say, we are able to kind of migrate the applications out of Citrix to SaaS. I think that the, 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 the depending factor is, is the application already available as a SaaS version? Uh, and that, that answer may be different for many organizations. So from a version 55 perspective, it doesn't matter, uh, but I think it's more about the timing uh, and what do you need to do first? And, and that approach is, well, again, what we see there is being done differently in healthcare than in government and education. In government, we just see a, a more transformed approach uh, rather than the big bang. And in healthcare, uh, we see more the big bang uh, and, and let's say for 90% and then 10% is still being done and, and maybe for a very long time being opened through either Citrix or Windows Virtual Desktop. So there are not so many customers who are 100% SaaS. There are always legacy applications involved. Uh, and, and for us, from a work perspective, 365 perspective, it doesn't matter. It only has an, uh, it does affect the cost of the infrastructure. Yeah, thank you. And another question in the chat is um, uh, one of my favorite questions that we hear a lot. What, like, what is the big difference between Microsoft 365 and Workspace 365? And also, uh, yeah, maybe let, let's first answer that one. Sure. Let me just get a zip of water, Mark. Yeah, so um, I think if you look at Microsoft 365, from a technology perspective, um, I think it's, it's, it's again, it, sorry, it's no longer about technology, right? So the way we facilitate and we simplify the workspace, uh, it's not about technology, it's about how can you enable and simplify the work of your workforce. And I think if you look at simplification and the way we simplify work, it's about how can we actually facilitate it? And then it becomes, it's not a conversation about how is it different than on Microsoft 365 or how is it different than Citrix? It's about how can we actually help the simplification for the employees? From a technology perspective, uh, we can aggregate all the different sources like Windows Virtual Desktop and Citrix. So, and then a file server to kind of become the hybrid workspace, which is different from a technology perspective. But I don't think that is, that is the biggest kind of key kind of differentiator between us and either Microsoft or, or, or let's say Citrix workspace. Uh, and I think uh, while many customers uh, for in the beginning uh, choose for us as the hybrid scenario uh, as, as a starting point, uh, ultimately they all see that the way we approach the, the workspace about simplification is actually the, the, the thing that makes the difference rather than technology itself. Yes. Yeah, and maybe also good uh, to add is that we are also a Microsoft partner. So we also uh, are always on lookout to see which integrations uh, they create and which integration we can use within Workspace 365. Um, and when you look at the roadmap of uh, our company and compare it to Microsoft or other larger vendors, you can see that we have a, uh, a advantage that we can quickly develop new things which are uh, coming from customer requests. Yeah, but I think it's also, if, you, if I look at uh, our conversation with Microsoft on both on Teams side or SharePoint side, uh, we are many programs together that actually help us to, to make important decisions about integrations. Uh, and, and if you look at Power Apps as an example, a very strong platform for Microsoft is about, okay, build your own Power Apps, which is uh, a beautiful platform if you want to build your own. Uh, but the way we think about it, so that's kind of our movement and our platform is that we want to build it once and make it available to everyone. So our approach is different. Um, and if you look at the amount of introductions we get from Microsoft account management uh, to customers in different verticals, say, hey, Mr. Customer, please look at this, this platform because it really helps you uh, to implement and adopt Office 65 at the same time if you can implement those different micro apps uh, and in the transformation process. 
uh, that is huge. Uh, so it, then it's not about uh, doing everything yourself, but just leveraging what, what, what has already been done. Yeah. See another question, uh, two more questions. Um, first one is, um, how do you see the role of Workspace 365 uh, with the rise of Microsoft Teams? Um, maybe you can answer something about that also seeing the coming update of Workspace. Yeah, sure. Um, so two sides. Um, I think um, Microsoft Teams is not uh, the desktop, and uh, you can say yet. Um, I think Teams it plays a very critical role in many organizations today, uh, also driven due to the pandemic, but I think overall was already happening before. Um, so Teams is, 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 is a lot about, let's say, conversations one-on-one -on -one and one-to-many or many-to-many. Um, and then if you think about the work processes, it becomes more and more part of teams as well. So what we decided internally is we don't want to make the decision for you uh, what your starting point could be, right? If you think that teams is the right starting point for you, uh, and then uh, you want to integrate your legacy application to teams, uh, we built the integration with teams uh, in a stepped approach. So we already done an update six months ago and then three months ago, and an update will come live within four weeks. And we actually can enable... 95% uh, of the functionalities and embed it in Teams. So if you think about micro apps or if you think about the file server app, or if you think about the integration with Citrix or RDP or Windows Virtual Desktop and the way we do role-based and conditional access can all be integrated in Teams if that's your starting point. Um, but I think if I listen to the conversation we have with our customers that Teams is a very good approach or like on the communication level, but to replace the current desktop it requires a different approach. Uh, while it can be, let's say, aggregated, I think what happened with the internet and the digital workspace, I think looking ahead, aggregation will happen uh, and then we become, uh, become, become part of this. But I think this is already happening in other segments. We have customers that use an internet, they implemented this internet two years ago, as it, we need those three different components from Office 64 and 65, can we embed this? And uh, we don't think we should be the forefront. We just want to be included and to facilitate the employees to conquer the complexity challenge. Um, so that's why we don't need to make decisions for you uh, what your starting point is and how can you kind of provide access to the information. And we can go either way or we can embed teams in the workspace or you can add workspace 65 elements in teams or you can run it side by side, which is also happening. Thank you, Eric. I see one more question, and I think this is a good question, uh, also a good example of what kind of questions we can uh, help with also in the uh, meetings. Um, so the question is how to migrate an environment with a large amount of files, over 1 million, without the problems that volumes create within Sh with SharePoint, sorry. Um, so I think it's interesting to have a look at the uh, document app of Workspace 365 and what you can do by integrating the file server to maybe not be uh, yeah be forced to make the entire uh, migration to SharePoint. But I think this is a perfect example question which you can uh, speak to us about with the uh, technical consultants. In the yeah, but I think a, a, a valid point here is that um, so we provide access to the information while we don't actually kind of migrate it ourselves. Uh, so, of course, we have experience with customers who have done this. Uh, so we have some best practices, um, but it's not we can't fix uh, any challenge on the migration level with SharePoint. We just provide you access to the information what's available for you on either file server, SharePoint or OneDrive. And we don't change this from a migration perspective. The only thing what we can do is you can kind of move, up, let's say, folders or files as, a, as an employee. But I think the skill of one million. Uh, and beyond is about how can you create the right migration path. We have experience. We know what tooling to use. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, happy to, to kind of uh, advise or give our experiences or give our experience. But I think it's not about the problem we solve, it's just the experience we have. Yes. Thank you, Eric. I see no more questions. So thank you all for your time. I hope you had uh, learned a lot. Um, I see one more question. Do you have an adoption program for users? We have. We have a uh, customer success team. So we have a team that is focused on helping uh, customers to move from their old IT environment and also to use the modern workspace. So uh, buying or migrating to the workspace is most times the first step. It's also really good to think about how do you use it and which people should be involved uh, within the uh, choice for a digital workspace. So also feel free to schedule a call and 
hopefully we'll see you next time. Thank you all and goodbye. Thanks. Have a great day.